hand was carried off on a stretcher after landing on her head, attempting a practice vault. She was rushed from there to the Nassau County Medical Center, where she'll have the benefit of some of the best medical care available in this area. Our most recent update on the situation is that she is listed in serious, not critical condition, has been taken to a facility for x-rays and CAT scans. We will keep you up to date on all of the developments regarding the Chinese gymnast Sang Lan as the evening goes on. And surely now your thoughts, as ours, are with the 17-year-old Chinese star after having seen that video. Meanwhile, precaution for head and spinal trauma. Our Craig Sager has gone to the Nassau County Medical Center and is standing by with a report right now. Craig? Well, Jim, I was in the emergency room with San Lan, the 17-year-old Chinese gymnast. She is conscious. Right now, she has gone in for CAT scans and also x-rays to determine any neurological damage as well as any damage to the bones. Now, we have been told personally that she is in stable but guarded condition. However, the official word from the hospital now is serious condition. The good news is that she was conscious and she has not been put up to any type of a a breathalyzer or anything to help her breathing. Now they say within an hour they should have a further report. They are waiting for Dr. Brock Schnabel, who's head of all the uh, facilities here, to make a formal statement. However, Kevin Moody from the USA Medical Staff is here, and I talked to him a few moments ago, and he said that this is a level one trauma center, some of the best precautions whatsoever in the entire United States at this facility. She is getting the best treatment whatsoever, and right now the Chinese delegation is with her, and she is conscious, undergoing a CAT scan and x-rays. We'll have more report, obviously, probably within an hour. All right, thank you very much, Craig, and uh, it goes without saying we'll avoid anything in the way of speculation and give you only concrete medical information which is given to us by doctors as this situation continues to develop. ...in a practice vault and was removed from the arena with every conceivable medical precaution, as I've said before, for head trauma or possible spinal cord injury. Craig Sager has already given us some early information from the Nassau County Medical Center. He's been following the story as it develops there. So let's go back to Craig now to check further on the condition of 17-year-old Chinese gymnastics star Sang Lan. Craig? Well, Jim, at the present moment, San Lan is in CAT scan. A full medical trauma team is treating her right now. They've all been called here to the Nassau County Medical Center. X-rays have been taken. With me is our medical correspondent, Steve Salvatore. And what does this all mean? Well, the fact that they had a trauma team called really isn't all that significant because they call a trauma team for every trauma patient that arrives at the hospital here, according to the hospital administrator, because this is a level one trauma center. The fact that she's in CAT scan, though, can mean that there is a serious neck injury. Standard protocol when a patient comes to the emergency room for neck injury is to get first a series of x-rays of the neck. Oftentimes, if doctors see something suspicious, something that might be real significant, they'll then send the patient to CAT scan. So right now, we're waiting for official word from the results of the CAT scan we should be getting that shortly so sounds like it might not be such great news I've been told she will be admitted to the intensive care surgical unit. Does that mean surgery will be required? Not necessarily. You can have a spinal cord injury, not necessarily need surgery. This is really just more a separation of where the patient would go in the hospital. Traditionally, trauma patients do go to the surgical service, so it doesn't mean she'll get surgery at this point. We should have the results of the CAT scan and any reports on any paralysis in a few moments. Back to you, Jim. All right, thanks very much, Craig. And let me make one thing clear. Steve Salvatore is a licensed medical doctor. That gives him the right to offer the kind of information he gave to you. You will get no speculation from sportscasters here on Sang Lan's condition, but we will keep you up to date as Steve Salvatore is able to sense what's going on over there at Nassau County Medical. It's lore, like Dominique Mociano in the all-around. Dawes hoped to dust off the competitive cobwebs on the uneven bars and recapture her magic from Atlanta. But over the next several nights, we'll also be introduced to the new wave. Those young women who watched the Magnificent Seven in Atlanta and now hope to succeed them. A year ago, the Gliders Gym in Covina, California was a bit less colorful. Coaches Beth and Steve Rybacki have seen baby Lexi turn the gym into her own personal playground. And it is here, too, that a new generation of American gymnastics has been born. For at age 16, Vanessa Atler and Jamie Dancher are together shifting the national balance of power. They probably spend more time together than, their own sisters than with their own <laughs> sisters or brothers or their own family members. And probably more time with us than their own parents, Steve. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and they're very compatible. It makes
makes yeah. you feel more comfortable because you're with somebody that you know and you've been together. Instead of feeling all alone, it's kind of sometimes it's hard to go to meets without each other. Yeah. Because I mean, just being not in like the hotel, out. you know, away from yeah. your family. I mean, when you have your friend there, I mean, and your best friend, it's like makes it I mean, really reassuring. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> way better. It makes your nerves kind of go down a little bit if we can, you know, look at each other and give us, like, give each other a little bit of smile <laughs> or something, you know, or make a joke or something. They connected almost immediately when they met at their old gym. She came in to try out, and I just remember <laughs> she had, like, her long braid in her hair, and we were sitting <laughs> like there stretching. We were both nine. She yeah, was stretching, and I was, like, all scared to come up because I had to be in their group, and then I, like, just sat down stretching them all high, like that, real high. Yeah, <laughs> Two years later, their coach sent them to Beth Rybacki for choreography. They found Beth understood the meaning of no fear, the meaning of girl power. So the girls never left. Snap, snap, snap! The last one was better. You gotta be more aggressive in what you're doing. More oomph every time you go. This is gonna make you stronger. At age 14, gymnastics phenomenon Beth Ann Klein was good enough to stretch the imagination. An American Olga? An American Nadia? We've seen, We've seen tapes, tapes of her before. And yeah, I've read things about how good she was. And I kind of wish that I like watched her before, you know, yeah. like before I knew her. That would have been even cooler, I guess. But the 1980 Moscow Olympic boycott left Beth's dream in tatters. 20 years later, both her protégés are pointed toward 2000. It's probably a way of her, like, kind of, not like living through us, but, you know, like, she wants us to go to the Olympics, kind of, I mean, for us, but, you know, she missed that, you know, and she, I think she really wants to... Yeah, to take someone there, or both of us there, would be, like, um, almost finishing her dream. My life, it's not like it will come to any closure, whether I go or not. It would be cool to walk in opening and closing ceremonies, I must say, though. But um, it's their dream now, and it's my job to help them get there. For the moment, the Olympics must wait. Baby Lexi is hungry again. Atler competed in the vault tonight and will be on the floor exercise tomorrow. Dancher will be in the mixed pairs competition over the weekend, so you'll see them. For taped coverage of gymnastics, sponsored by Sony, here's Greg Lewis. Russia's Svetlana Horkina isn't like other gymnasts. High heels, makeup, and attitude set this glamour girl apart, whether she's in the gym or in the mall. And her latest endeavor in Russia's Playboy magazine turned gymnastics itself upside down. But in the competitive spotlight, Horkin has adorned herself with five Olympic and world golds. Still, two nights ago, she faltered here in the all-around, a disappointing seventh place. Tonight, the queen of the bars seeks revenge in her best event. She's the Olympic champion, number one, bar none. Well, welcome inside Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. It is day number three of these Goodwill Games gymnastics and the first night of individual event finals featuring the men's floor exercise and pommel horse and the women's vault and uneven bars. And working with me, Kathy Johnson-Clark and Bart Connor. And Kathy, we're going to see Svetlana Horkina a little later, but we're going to start right off the top with this young woman, America's new star, Vanessa Atler. What a tremendous opportunity for Vanessa Atler. This is her first time in major competition. She was too young last year to compete at the World Championship, and she's got a shot at a medal, though she's up against some wonderful vault finalists. And Bart, on the men's side, the 97 men's floor world champion, Alexei Namoff, looking for a little revenge? Could be, because he was terrible in the all-around competition, but he's terrific on the floor. And Greg, I've always thought if you took the power of Carl Lewis and you mix it with the ballet technique of Baryshnikov, you have Alexei Namoff. He's in a wonderful sensation on the floor. He's a master there, and we're going to see him perform on the floor tonight. And here is the premier American prospect for Sydney, the 2000 Games, Vanessa Atler. She's performing a layout cuervo, and believe me, it's as exotic as the name sounds. <laughs> it's an unusual vault, one that is very, very difficult. It's worth a 9.9. .9. 
Whoa. Man, Whoa. she went flying. Talk about height and distance. Atler is making her senior international debut here tonight in these Goodwill games. This is worth a 9.9, .9 and she is so clean in the air. It's going to be hard to find deductions in the air. They'll hit her a little bit for the landing. Reminds you, in a way, of Mary Lou Retton with that overabundance of a power. Mary Lou had a problem in her career of making good landings because she was too springy, too bouncy when she landed. That could be a concern for Vanessa. 9.650, and that is the best vault score of the evening. And ranks her number one as we just get underway with this night of event finals, vault and uneven bars for women, floor exercise and pommel horse for men. Her second vault is also worth a 9.9. .9. That's going to be key here, having the highest rated vault. Watch this double twisting your Let's see if she can pull it around. Very nice. She's a tremendous vaulter with so much power, great technique. Greg, you mentioned that she was a hot prospect for the U.S. in Sydney in 2000. I really admire her coaches, Beth and Steve Rybacki, because they're really trying to keep that Olympic hopeful pressure down on her. They don't do all the interviews. They're trying to keep it nice and cool because there sometimes can be a curse being called an Olympic hopeful. When we come back, world champion Alexei Nemov will compete. Welcome back to our opening night of event finals. Vanessa Atler of the USA leading now in the women's vault with a 9.662. The young American showing herself nicely in her senior international debut. But now to floor exercise and Alexei Bondarenko, who was the silver medalist in last night's all around of the Goodwill Games and had an unusually low 8.95 on the floor X. Greg, he missed his second tumbling run and we'll see if he can make it today. He's a very quick tumbler. His coach says he's light and he thinks that's impressive to the judges and he does moves effortlessly and I think that's one of the reasons he gets such good scores. You think the foot problem's gone away? Well, we're going to find out right now. Watch this. Should be a double twisting, double somersault. Oh, yeah. Boy, it looks better than he did last night. It wasn't really till the end of the routine that we started seeing the problems. He missed the middle pass and then watered back. Let's see, here's the tricky one. Much better tonight, little sloppy on the landing. There's the Thomas Flares, up the handstand and down. Beautiful. Great combination there, you're seeing so many combinations of pommel horse elements on the floor these days to rack up bonus points. It's provided a nice new dimension to men's floor exercise, actually. Mm -hmm. Certainly one of the current stars of the sport. And we asked him about his star status, and he said, well, maybe after the Olympics I might be a star, but right now I don't feel like he's, I'm a star. Well, he's the 98 European all-around champion, so he's well on his way to being a star. What power. Uh -oh. oh. But he went for a harder skill this time. He definitely watered back an all around through a full twisting double back here, though. Alexei Bondarenko of Russia. Alexei finished first in the all around with parallel bars, second on the pommel horse, third on the floor exercise, and fourth on the skill rings. And by the way, he finished. Last tumbling pass. Full twisting double back with the full in the first somersault. He came in a little bit low, but managed to show good control on the landing. He's only 117 pounds, so the guy flies like a bird. He's light. And Alexei Nemov gets ready to perform the defending floor champion. And here is Alexei Bondarenko, 9.525, only the second best score on the floor. So the door is open for Nemov to repeat as Goodwill Games floor champion. Beautiful opening tumbling run. This here is a critical pass. Three front moves in a row, nicely done. Now watch the finesse here. He does these so beautifully. Oh. 
Only seventh in the all around last night, but had the highest score in the floor exercise. Although he's had most success on floor and vault, he says high bar is his favorite event because you're always flying. Solid routine so far. Probably a pike double back somersault right here. Nice form, good control. <laughs> He's such a ham, Greg. It's interesting because he has told us that he admits he's much more popular here in America than he is in Russia. He knows this hamming it up routine plays pretty well over here in New York. This is absolutely gorgeous from the tip of his toes all the way through the tips of his fingertips. Everything is perfect. A photographer's dream. Just snap, snap, snap and have beautiful shots. Look at the form in this tumbling pass pike double back somersault like a diver beautiful body position effortless landing back to the home for our next competitor from romania simona amanar simona amanar of romania best vaulter in the world for several years olympic gold 96. certainly one of the most consistent vaulters ever really look at that double twisting yurchenko she had a hop on the landing but you see how far she went from the horse? Judges are going to like that. 9-9 nine, nine is the start value of this vault. She launches it, but I have to admit, not quite as well as some of the other gymnasts in this competition. We've seen her do it a little bit better. Still, it's going to get a heck of a score, isn't it? And Nimov, 9.725. And plays to the crowd and the camera. He is number one right now in the floor oh, exercise. Simona Aminar is number one in the vault with her first score there. What will her average be? She has consistently won major events with both of these vaults. I have a feeling, though, now the judges are starting to hit harder on this Phelps ball if they don't hit the laid-out position, and Simona Aminar has never really hit the laid-out position on the ball. Yeah, I don't think that she's going to surpass Vanessa Atler because the judges are going to give her scores in the range of 9, 2 and a half, 9, 3 is all she can get for the way she performed that vault, even though it has a 9-8 start value. That's going to move her down. And when we come back, Hungary's Adrian Varga, 98 European vault champion, competes. Goodwill Games on the Superstation. Brought to you by MCI. One team, one company, one local to global connection. By Canon, a proud sponsor of the 1998 Goodwill Games. And by First Plus, official sponsor of the 1998 Goodwill Games. Well, back at Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum, Vanessa Atler still holds the number one spot in the women's vault standing. Simona Aminar, 0 .075 back, the last competitor we saw. As we get set now for a woman who could change all this, it is Adrian Varga, the 98 European vault champion. Greg, when she won the European Championships, it was funny in the press conference, she said, um, you know, after she won, Porkina, her friend, won two events, but she believes she's twice as happy. She was so excited to win this. Watch how much speed she generates. I mean, she's like a track star getting ready for a long jump. She is an incredible vaulter in terms of just the power and dynamics behind her vault. I think, however, on that vault, she might have been a little long in that piked position. Let's take a look at the replay. As you watch, admire her height and distance, but see the piked position in the air. She really needed to be more laid out. We'll have to see what the judges do with that. You can see here, perhaps she even grabs her hips and pulls it around a little bit. She needs to have her arms free from her legs and to try to keep totally straight. Varga, a big gymnast, 5'5", 119, two inches taller and two pounds heavier than Alexei Bondarenko. Yeah. <laughs> she can definitely use that to her advantage on this event, though. It's got a lot of speed and a lot of power. This is the apparatus on which she wants the gold medal in Sydney. 
Scores range from 9-4 to 9-6 from the judges here. 9.475, the first vault. This is probably the most difficult vault in the competition here. It's worth a 9.9. .9. Really hard to get it around. A oh, one and yeah. a half twist. Oh, she's happy with that. We see that vault more often in men's competition. Really, there are only a couple of other women in the world who do this vault. I think it's her speed that she generates in addition to that great technique that allows her to launch it in the air. Amazing that she actually finishes the twist and the somersault. Watch this. Her head is still at the height of the horse and just spots the landing. Great vault. And a score for Varga in the second vault, a 9.650. The average 9.562 only ranks her fifth. So Vanessa Atler, number one in the vault competition. And here she is, the new vault champion of the Goodwill Games. It's Vanessa Atler with a great 9.662. A proud evening for her here in Long Island, and this is Jay Thornton of the USA. 5'10", big man, got the nickname Hoss. Well, Greg, he's 160 pounds, which uh, isn't big for the average man, but for a gymnast, he's a Hulk. Very explosive on the floor. Well-designed routine, good combinations here. Nice landing. Had the highest floor score for the U.S. in the 97 Worlds. Did a terrific job at the World Championships for the U.S. team. Now trains out at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado. From Augusta, Georgia. Beautiful. That move there is called a Thomas, named after Kurt Thomas of the U.S. team. He did it in the laid out position and just precise technique. Last tumbling pass right here. Full twisting double back. Good landing. Excellent routine. Jay Thornton, 9.550, and that will rank him number two as we look at the final in the floor exercise. Yamoff repeats as Goodwill Games champion. Thornton of the USA second, and Bondarenko is getting the third place finish here. And in the women's vault, well, it is Vanessa Atler, number one, and uh, top the leaderboard, a position that she will probably claim many times in her young career. Dolgopolova of Russia second, and the veteran Aminar of Romania in third. And when we return, America's Dominique Dawes and Russia's Fetlana Horkina will compete in the uneven bars. All right, now we return to the most sobering subject of the evening. You'll recall very uh, back at the very beginning of the telecast, we told you about the incident which had befallen 17-year-old Chinese gymnast Sang Lan about 45 minutes before the beginning of the gymnastics competition when she suffered an accident during a practice vault this is the Chinese national vault champion. And after the accident, she was removed from the arena with precautions that certainly seem to indicate the possibility of a head or spinal trauma. We've been following the story at the Nassau Medical Center, or Nassau County Medical Center all night. And right now, Dr. Steve Salvatore is standing by there with new information. Dr. Salvatore, what can you tell us about 17-year-old Sang Lan? Well, Jim, unfortunately, we've got bad news. Doctors have confirmed to us that she has suffered a fracture dislocation of her lower neck. Now, what that means is that her neck is broken through the sixth cervical vertebrae, and it has moved forward on the seventh cervical vertebrae, and that has caused damage to her spinal cord. She's paralyzed in her legs. She has weakness in her arms, can move her hands slightly, but she's stable with normal vital signs and breathing on her own, but not good news tonight. Uh, when will we know, or when might we know, the full extent of her paralysis and a long-term prognosis, Dr. Salvatore? 
Well, at this point, it's just too early to tell, according to doctors. Right now, she's undergoing some therapy to help minimize the swelling with high-dose medication, which has been proven to be effective at this early stages. But her next step from here is to move on to an MRI, where they get a better picture of the bones and how badly they're broken, how badly they're displaced. They're going to make a decision if whether or not she will need surgery. So really, it's very, very difficult to tell. But the early stages here are always the critical stages. So that's why they get this medication into her early, and we can only keep our fingers crossed for her at this point. Well, what you're telling me, uh, it's clear that her spinal cord was not severed. Is that significant? Well, it's not so much that it's severed or not severed. What it is is when you have this kind of an injury, you have impingement or damage to the spinal cord. So there is definite damage. The question now is how severe is that the damage, and that's why they're getting more tests to get a better idea of the extent. So at this point, really, they're just going to have to wait and get more testing. They wouldn't tell us anything more on that. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Salvatore, for your work out there. A couple of more details before we leave the story. Uh, right now, Goodwill Games officials are attempting through the Chinese Sports Federation to reach Sanglan's parents in a town named Ningbo in China so that they can be apprised of the situation and flown into New York to be with their daughter. Also, we want to tell you that the video you saw at the beginning here after Sanglan was shown being treated was not the video of the accident. We don't have that. We're told that there is an elite gymnastics coach there at the scene who has camcorder video of the accident, but she, the coach, refuses to release that video to television outlets, and I can't help observing about that. Great. Good for her. I'm not sure that there's any need for us to see exactly what happened. We'll be back with more of the Goodwill Games right after this. The men's pommel horse and the women's uneven bars. Vanessa Atler of the USA has already won a gold medal, and that was on the women's vault. Uh, coming up, the pommel horse, Bart Connor. Can the American Yuki Tomita do the same? He certainly has a terrific chance. He's just 18 years old. He's a great technician on this event. Eight of the best pommel horse workers in the world in this final. And he has a chance tonight to make a name for himself. He is one of the great hopes so of the U.S. team over the next couple of years. Else. The big favorite, of course, in the uneven bars, Kathy Johnson-Clark, has got to be Svetlana Horkina. Greg, over the last few years, you couldn't even talk about the uneven bars without mentioning her name. She owns this event, European, world, and Olympic champion. She's definitely the class of the field and the ones everyone is trying to beat. Well, everyone here has come to also see America's Dominique Dawes as she returns to a big-time competition. Her teammate from the 1996 Magnificent Seven squad, Amanda Borden working with us on the floor. And Amanda, your thoughts on Dominique Dawes? Well, you know, Greg, exactly two years ago tonight, our team was getting ready to compete in Atlanta. And I distinctly remember how nervous Dominique was for bars that night. I talked to her earlier this morning, and she said that the nerves are still there two years later, but that she is just really excited to be here tonight competing at her first Goodwill Games. And here she is, Dominique Dawes, now 21. And her presence ignites the crowd. Amanda talked about her being nervous. Apparently, she has brought a good luck charm, a beanie baby, with her. In spite of her nerves, this is a good event for Dominique. She's usually very aggressive, particularly on this first big move right here. It's called a Hindor. And it's a big one, way up above the bar. Nicely done. Kathy, she made several mistakes in the warm-ups and in the training on some of those moves. She seems to be on here. She was supposed to do a one-and-a-half pirouette, but she covered up very nicely. We'll have to see what happens with her score, because I think she might have needed that for her bonus points. Nice. Full I think she'll be happy with it. Well, the crowd is happy with it. This is just gorgeous, way up above the bar. And it was on that move that yesterday in practice, she took a terrible crash, went flying, hit the bars, landed on the floor in a heap. <laughs> As we await Dawes score, Yuki Tomita. Horse is his favorite event. Coached by his father, Yoichi. And he has grown four inches this year, Bart, and that has to really change the dynamics on the pommel horse. 
being long and lean is an advantage on this event because he can generate some big, fluid, swinging movements. Watch how well he does keeping his body straight. Interesting contrast from Dominique Dawes, the aggressive performer. He's a real technician. He's in control. He's smooth. He's not a powerhouse. He's so light on his hands. Beautiful form and technique. This is a requirement, the scissors. He'll pick up back into the flares. Nicely done. Yuki Tomita, 18-year-old out of Tucson, Arizona. Score for Dominique Dawes, 9.4. Now the ranking is one, but she is the first to compete in this uneven bars final. And when we come back, we'll have Svetlana Orkina, the world and Olympic champion on bars. Well, no more shopping and primping with teammate Yelena Prodanova. It's time for Horkina to go to work. The score for Yuki Tomita. 9-3-7-5 on the pommel horse for the young American. And Greg, you won't believe her work on the uneven bars. She has been so consistent on this event. And more than that, just unique from start to finish. It's wonderful to see the creativity in this routine. She uses every inch of this long body to make the routine spectacular. And that's her move. Watch the dismount. She's going to be aggressive on the landing. Perfect. Time and time again, we see this routine. Wow. Never ceases to amaze me. What's unusual is she actually changes the technique on some of these skills to accommodate her size. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the highest score so far of the Goodwill Games. This routine had full difficulty, unique elements, impeccable transitions like this move. It's called the Horkina. It's named after her. She has two moves named after her on the uneven bars. She has tremendous amplitude as well. Watch this. Up above the bar, tight little twist, and look at that. She doesn't move an inch. Svetlana Horkina, her score, 9825. We'll be back with the conclusion after this. Chinese gymnast Song Long took a terrible fall on the vault, and I have to believe that was a factor in the other Chinese performances, certainly a loss of concentration for Meng Fei, as well as Ling Ji. They both fell from the uneven bars, reminding us perhaps that uh, they're not only highly trained world-class athletes, but they have to be concerned for their teammate, Song Long. Well, now America's Elise Ray will try to lift the spirits of everyone here on the uneven bars. This fine youngster, just and 16. It's a wonderful moment, one she'll never forget, her first big international competition. She really has nice form and technique on the bars. It's a very solid performance here so far, but the biggest part of the routine is right here, the dismount, full twisting double layout. Boy, I think she's going to be happy with that. First a sigh of relief, and then a hug from Coach Kelly Hill. And the score, 9.7. Yes, she will be very happy with that. And now, men's pommel horse, Nikolai Kryukov. Wasn't in the all-around. Also, a young man, 19. 97 worlds, fifth on the pommel horse. Has a complex routine. He certainly does, and he has a gold medal from the Olympics in Atlanta. Just 17 years old. The gymnast to beat here is Bondaranka, who had a terrific performance, but he has the stuff to do it here because this routine is packed with difficulty. Nice execution. He 
It appears that Yuki Tamita from the United States will get the bronze medal, at least a bronze medal, depending on how well Krukov finishes here. This is great. Just one more sequence up to the handstand. Oh, yeah. Super routine. Krukov in what might be gold medal form. 9.650, and that is indeed the top score. So he joins his teammate, Russian Svetlana Horkina, who's the first woman to repeat as Goodwill gold medalist. She won the bars in 1994. She has done it again here. As we look at the results, Horkina has the gold, America, Elise Ray has silver, Aminar the bronze, and Dominique Dawes comes back to competition with a fifth. In the pommel horse competition for the men, Krukov takes gold, Bondarenko silver, and the American Tomita is the bronze medalist here. And now let's go down to Amanda Borden and our champion in the uneven bars. Amanda? Congra congratulations, Sveta. How do you feel tonight? I feel like it's okay. I won't sleep very tight. I am happy. I love New York. <laughs> Don't we all? Glamour girl of Russia, Svetlana Horkina. Well, tomorrow night, more event finals. It's men on rings and vault, women on beam and floor, and America's Vanessa Atler will dazzle on the floor in pursuit of more gold as the Goodwill Games continue.